Okay, good morning. This presentation will be a little bit more technical than the previous two, but just for introduction, why trainings? Okay, uh, I will start with uh, a few facts about uh, NZ buildings that are in focus of our trainings and uh, you know that they are very important part of uh, reaching the climate energy targets for 2030 in the EU. Uh, if you compare uh, today's uh, buildings and the future, near future NZEPs, uh, the difference in um, energy needs is about uh, two to three times. And uh, when you have uh, such a low energy consumption, for example, 20 kilowatt hours per square meter annually uh, for, as an energy need and primary energy about 30 or 40 uh, kilowatt hours, then everything counts. So uh, if you make uh, small mistakes, they, they will be relatively high. That's why uh, we need uh, more accurate uh, uh, tools, calculating tools, which are found now uh, in uh, EPB standards. Uh, they are based on uh, dynamic or semi-dynamic calculations uh, on hourly level. So this is perhaps the, the, the first step towards the fully dynamic methods, but uh, at the moment this is the only uh, consistent way of calculating uh, energy performance of building apart from the simulation tools that are black box and they are not suitable for, for uh, certification purposes. Uh, in order to handle with such a complex calculations, you need uh, good training. Um, we believe that uh, these trainings will, will be uh, in very near future urgent and people already ask for them because uh, with uh, current methods uh, it's quite impossible to achieve uh, enough accurate uh, results for uh, such a small uh, or low consumption energy consumption buildings. So this is the, the, the main reason why uh, we need uh, good trainings apart from uh, good software, good calculation tool that will follow uh, this calculation because it's impossible to do anything without it. But more on this topic uh, uh, will be dealt in presentation of Loran. So I'll go just quickly uh, through the other uses of uh, EPB standards. Uh, it's already outlined in, in previous presentations. Beside the uh, issuing uh, energy performance certificates, they can be also used uh, in designing stage, and very often they are, uh, for verification of minimum requirements. And uh, also they can be used, uh, perhaps we'll have some time to show you, in sizing of the system components, for example, uh, the power of the boiler or uh, size of solar collectors. And uh, also uh, the, you can use it for comparison with measured and simulated energy consumption at the end. Uh, it's very important that uh, you have uh, appropriate calculation tool, as I said, and uh, inputs uh, to this tool are something that is um, uh, the most questionable part, uh, because these are boundary conditions that uh, you can uh, provide in uh, different ways, and the final result will, will very much depend on it. So. Uh, it's very good news that we have uh, now the product database, uh, which is uh, starting started operated uh, this year. So uh, the future calculation tool will be surely linked to it, and you will have consi consistent inputs uh, to to the calculations. Uh, our standards uh, are mainly focused on uh, fifteen three one six series and some related standards uh, calculating heat loads, energy needs for domestic hot water and for economics and inspection. But the main focus uh, will be on these standards uh, that comprise the, the systems from the emission to distribution via storage and generator. So uh, our education is modular and uh, each part uh, uh, is focused on this part of, of the system. So uh, I'll just go very quickly through, through the content of, the, of our seminars, our trainings. At the first part, uh, we try to uh, 
outline some fundamentals that most of uh, engineers and, and other experts, uh, architects, civil engineers, should already know. But uh, it's, it's, it's good to uh, remember again the, how, for example, the, the uh, power of, of emitters is calculated, uh, what are the heat losses of solar collector, what is the difference uh, between uh, installed generator power of energy need or the current energy need. So th these are some terms that may not be uh, uh, very well known and uh, we focus in, in our fundamental part on it. Uh, also very important is uh, uh, this input uh, part to the calculation. Uh, we try to provide uh, guidelines for uh, our trainees how to use, uh, for example, some certificates that can be found on the market, uh, which part of it are important for, for uh, our Excel sheets. In the third part, uh, we uh, go to the main calculation procedure. We try to explain the whole procedure uh, via some uh, uh, flow, flow charts, uh, along with uh, uh, basic equations. We don't go uh, to the every equation, because in each standard you have a high number of equations, in average 60, 70, 80. That's a lot of equations. It's impossible to uh, teach people each of these. But we focus on the, the most important ones. Um, and the uh, output values are something that is uh, uh, related to the other modules. We discussed uh, in this part uh, uh, which uh, output values uh, are standalone or can be used for as inputs to the other modules. And uh, after we complete this theoretical part, we, we go uh, to the spreadsheets, which is a practical part of the trainings where we try through examples to, to teach people how to use uh, our spreadsheets and to perform overall calculations. So we use uh, handbooks for, for this purpose. Uh, handbooks are an uh, array of formulas uh, written in the exact order as they're implemented in Excel. And uh, there are also some ex additional explanations uh, in it. Uh, with some input values uh, outlined. So it's good resume of the standard and calculation procedure. So they can be also used uh, as a supplement to the technical reports that each standard uh, has. Uh, then we focused on uh, filling in uh, input, spread, uh, input uh, sheets of our Excels uh, and discuss uh, whether to use product data or, or uh, or to use some default uh, values. Most of inputs are d default, so it's very convenient for a user. You don't need to know anything, you just use uh, your default data. If you have product data, it's perfect, then you can use it instead. And uh, the last part of uh, each module deals with uh, uh, the results of the analysis, which is a parametric analysis. We discuss the most influencing parameters. For example, in this, uh, uh, slide you can see the temperatures in the storage. I will refer in this presentation to the uh, solar hot water system uh, connected to the storage and you see the temperatures in the different layers. Uh, we also have some nice uh, graphical presentations of the temperatures in the layers and we explain uh, the calculation procedure step by step uh, in this graphical interface which is uh, easy to understand for, for our trainees how actually procedure, which is very complex, uh, works. And then uh, we uh, give some examples of the outputs. Um, each spreadsheet has uh, tables and the diagrams where you can analyze more in detail uh, everything that you want. We also have uh, here uh, in diagram, you can, you can see the, the temperatures in the, in the hot water uh, boiler. Um, and then uh, in each presentation we have some solved uh, uh, examples that should out outline the influence of the most important uh, parameters. For example, in this case we have uh, uh, 
a comparison uh, between three cases, uh, hot water storage volume, uh, 500 liters down to 200 liters, and we see the influence of the uh, total energy consumption. Uh, this volume of 300 liters has the lowest consumption because uh, it yields the lowest temperatures in a solar loop. The higher volume storage has uh, even lower temperatures, but it has higher storage losses. So these are good examples how uh, some parameters can influence uh, the design of the, of the system. And we also uh, have in this example, uh, it might be interesting for, for those dealing, uh, working with solar systems, how, uh, the, for example, the, the mass flow in the solar loop or the total consumption influence uh, the uh, collected uh, energy on a collector. So we see that uh, the higher is the consumption, we get uh, more energy out of uh, our solar system. So uh, um, at the end, uh, each trainee uh, will uh, get some tasks to uh, make integral calculation if it, uh, he or she applies for uh, all modules and uh, here you can see the influence uh, of the different uh, system setups uh, for example condensing boiler and solar system or heat pump or we, we make examples with biomass boiler as well uh, 12 uh, square meters of collectors or only four square meters just for hot water boil, uh, hot water, uh, domestic hot water purposes. And you see a uh, comparison between these solutions. So uh, this is example how uh, the standards of these calculations can be used for finding some optimum from technical point solutions. And also one part of, of our trainings will be devoted to, to economical evaluation as well. So. Uh, Basically, the training is interactive, especially in the part uh, where uh, trainees are working with uh, spreadsheets. Uh, the emphasis is on uh, nearly zero energy buildings, of course. And uh, yeah, we, we hope that uh, this will work, that trainees do some examples by themselves as a homework. We'll test this uh, in one month in Zagreb when we have a pilot. Uh, I have to say that it was a uh, very good interest. In a few hours, we reached like 40 people and we end the uh, applications with this number. If we continued, we, we would even have more applications. So uh, we feel that people uh, uh, are interested in this kind of uh, trainings. They, they want to know the new things and especially in the light of uh, new, new regulations asking for a calculation of NZEPs and most of uh, engineers, uh, experts that we are in contact uh, are not very familiar with these calculations. The, many of them even don't know what is uh, uh, primary energy, what is delivered energy and uh, stuff like this. So um, we see a, a good future for these trainings. Um, I hope I'm right, we'll uh, see very soon how the things will go. And uh, yeah, as, as Jana said before, uh, all experts that are interested in becoming certified experts, they should uh, pass some exams. And um, uh, training materials are listed here, they were already mentioned. Uh, so uh, I, I will try to show you very quickly, because I have five minutes left, how our materials look like. So let me start with um, our presentations, how they look like. Maybe I can start with uh, this one for solar part. <coughs> they were all completed in a, in a first half of the project. So they are available on the share. Um, not already to the public, but they will be used in, in our training. So in the first part, uh, uh, we present uh, uh, fundamentals. We have uh, explanations here for the tra trainers. And uh, as I said, these fundamentals uh, should uh, help people to uh, follow the later uh, procedure of the standard. I don't have time for very, uh, it's just quick quick survey what you can find in presentations. After fundamentals, uh, you have uh, some input uh, 
data part with, uh, I already shown these slides. Uh, just, this is just uh, explanation of, of the uh, product data sheets. Uh, and then you have calculation method with some basic formulas, as I said, and then output data and then examples. <laughs> uh, if, if we go to the handbook uh, for, for example, this standard, you will see uh, that uh, it contains the, the all formulas from the standards and more some explanations how to use it. So uh, this is a handbook, but at the same time is, a, I would say, a flowchart for Excel. And anyone can use it and create his or her own Excel sheet, or any software producer can also use it for the same purpose. Okay, and then just to show you some examples from the our spreadsheets, how they are organized. It takes time, I'm sorry. <coughs> it's actually a Visual Basic programmed Excel. So it's a little bit heavy. Okay. So uh, in each Excel, uh, you have uh, interface. Uh, for example, in this uh, solar storage part, you can, you can choose uh, 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 if you want to uh, use it for space heating, domestic hot water, or both, uh, where you have heat exchanger, uh, what type of heat exchanger you have, uh, uh, how it's your uh, connection, you have heat exchanger or direct connection. Here you put the position of your heat exchanger in, because the each storage is divided into layers. And here you put uh, uh, arbitrary volume of, of your uh, layers and you define the heat losses here. Uh, it can be the default or product data, and you uh, insert here, uh, here uh, the, the flow uh, in the solar loop as well. Then you have uh, input series. This is something that uh, our trainees don't have to uh, worry about. This is automatic part, but just to show you what is included. Uh, here you have method input and method calculation uh, with uh, all Equations here, they are in the standard, and you can follow step by step calculation procedure here if you like to. Uh, here in method output, you have the basic results, and uh, also these are output series, they are connection to the other modules. And here you have uh, output interface where, uh, where you can follow the temperatures in a storage tank. And I prepared one short example just for you to show you how the training may look like. Uh, here you see the temperatures in a storage tank uh, uh, at the beginning of a day. You have uh, some temperature certification, of course, and uh, when we start uh, using water, the temperatures in the upper layers fall down, and in one moment you have heater activated, and you can see here uh, this is step by step explanation how the procedure goes and you see the, 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 the additional heater is turned on in this moment and if you go further uh, we'll arrive to the moment when the solar loop starts heating for example here we, we started with, with solar heat exchanger working and this is the way how to present people results. If you want, we can we can go uh, back and show all these uh, values here uh, with, uh, I don't know, in each arbitrary time step. Okay, I'm finished. So you see the temperatures in the in the upper lower layers, you you see when the, the um, additional heaters were turned on, etc., etc., etc. So there is a, a lot of possibilities in these Excel's for very detailed analysis or just uh, the main outputs. Uh, it depends uh, to which level of details you want to go. So thank you very much. Thank you.